Hello and thank you for joining me for another video in the training series for the Cloud VMS software by VendingZoo. Now in this video I will be going through the process of filling a machine or servicing it and we're going to use Toucan for this video but Toco was built for this purpose as well. Toco is part of the cloud that is designed for smaller screens like phones and tablets that you can use when you are on site at the machine to record the fill data and then save it directly to the cloud. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use Toucan on a phone or tablet but it might be a little squished on smaller screens which is why the Toco application was built. But it's not a requirement to use Toucan or Toco when you're at the machine. Some operators are more comfortable printing out um, paper reports and then making notes and then using that to enter their fill data later at their computer. So that's what we're going to do in this video is use Toucan to actually record that we serviced a machine. Now before we can service a machine we have to have placed machines at locations and we did that when we created our new working locations and started to build our working location list. So let's go ahead and go into the working location list. When our list comes back, we can see that there's some color coordination that's going on here. Now the blue rows simply indicate that TOCO was the application that was used the last time this service was saved. And the darker rows mean that Toucan was the application that was used. So if I scroll over here to the right, I can see this source column, and this is just telling me that TOCO was the application that was used. It was used on September 4th, by Tanya Admin to uh, record this service. So Toucan and Toco can either be used to record service information. Okay, as we go through and service uh, a couple of machines, we'll go through one time just kind of a normal service so you can kind of see the flow and the routine. And then the second one we will go through, I will be more specific and detailed and go a little slower to explain what's going on in the whole process. So to start with, I'm going to service this Abbott's Sports Lounge machine. The last time it was serviced was August 30th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're going to say that now it is September 15th. And uh, we went out earlier today and serviced this machine and now we're back and we want to record that service. I didn't completely fill the machine up, but I mostly filled it up. I switched out a couple of products and then I didn't have all the product with me that I needed so I didn't fill all the coils back to capacity but most of the machine got filled back to capacity so that'll be our service information that we record so to do that I want to go into my edit window by clicking my edit button and that opens up my new service for my Abbott Sports Lounge machine now when we do an add working location the location drop down and the machine drop down are um, enabled so that I can pick the new machine in the new location. Once a machine gets located then these drop downs become disabled and if I ever want to use this machine at a different location I need to unlocate it first. Okay we will go through that process as soon as we're done filling up this machine right now. So now that I've opened up my window the first thing I want to do is record the date and time that I filled the machine. This isn't the date and time that I'm entering in the information, but this is the date and time when I was at the machine and filled it back up. So that was September 15th. We will say at 3.30 p.m. Okay, so enter our date and time. Now if we want, we can record how much cash we took out of that machine. We'll say we took $150.25 physically from the machine. All right, now since I mostly filled the machine up, just didn't fill it up quite all the way, I'm gonna go ahead and use my fill machine button. And Toucan is gonna go through and figure out how much product I must have put in this machine based on how much I put in last time I serviced it back on August 30th and the ePort data that's come in so far. It can figure that out for me. So I'll say fill machine, and now if I go through the coils, they're all filled back up to capacity. So my current fill for those now is all back at their capacity. Okay, but I didn't really fill all of them up. Um, some of them I didn't have enough products, so we're going to go through and make those changes now. 
So my apple slices, they aren't selling very well, so I'm going to change those products out. Apple chips, for some reason, is doing really good, so I decided to replace the apple slices with apple chips. So I'm just going to replace that product and tell Toucan that I did fill it up all the way, so I had to add seven of those, and my current fill is still seven. So I just replaced that product. Now, on our fruit roll-ups, I didn't have enough product to fill it up all the way. So I really, instead of adding 10, I really only added 7. Now as soon as I click off of that field, Toucan is going to try to figure out what my new current fill is. So I'll just click here so you can see how it makes that change. So now there's 11 in there. Alright, then the Cliff Bar Chocolate Chips, I'll click on that one. I didn't have enough product to fill this one up all the way either. So I really didn't add seven, I really only added six. Okay, then I'll click off that field so we can see that Toucan figures out the new current fill for me. But 13 is not accurate because I gave a couple of them away while I was there as samples to the employees. So there's really only 11. So I can just go ahead and override that. So the important thing to remember is when I'm done, that all of the coils have their current fill set to how much product is in that coil. And that's going to reset all of the e-data levels so that the e-port data that comes in after I service this machine will all start using that new information and start counting down from this new current fill that I set. Alright, there's one more product that I changed. We'll say it was our pineapple juice. So I went ahead and changed the pineapple juice to the orange soda. So we'll pick that new product. And I didn't fill this one up all the way. I only was able to add 10. So my new current fill is 10 as well for that one. OK, everything else stayed the same. And I was able to fill it all back up to capacity. So. I'm ready to save this service, so I'm going to go ahead and say save. And that service just got saved. So my color changed because I just used Toucan instead of Toco to save the service, and there's my new service date. Okay, if I ever needed to unlocate a machine from a location, I simply use this unlocate button right here. So I would click that. And it's going to prompt me and say, are you sure you want to remove this? I would go ahead and say yes. It doesn't actually delete this location or delete this machine. It just unlocates that machine from that location. And then I can relocate that machine now at a different location if I want to. Or I can just leave it unlocated and it still remains in my machine list. It's just not located. Maybe it's in storage. So if I say yes, all it's really doing is just taking that machine out of my list of working locations. So that's how I can unlocate stuff. OK, let's service another machine and be a little more detailed this time. So let's do this to Frame Law Office. OK, so as some background information, typically what I'm doing as I'm monitoring my business is I place this machine at this location. And that was great. Got it placed and got it established and then I had ePort data that was coming in and I was loading that ePort data. Then I would go out and, and fill this machine up and record that fill and then after that I would load more ePort data and I would just kind of be monitoring that machine using my, using my remote monitoring tools. As I am servicing that information and also as I'm loading that information it's building a history for this location. So Toucan, every time I make changes to any of my machines or my locations or any time I'm loading any kind of electronic data, all of that is building up in my service history. So for example, if we go to locations and go to service history, let's look at the history for that Dufresne Law Office location. So I just pick the machine and then I say I want to search for that. And that's going to bring back all of the history that is being built. So that first row that's showing up here, that's when I initially created this working location and established that location. And it created my first history row. It's black or it's dark because I used Toucan to do that. After I did that, 
then I started loading my ePort data and every day I loaded ePort data created a new history row here for me then I went out with Toco and I checked on that machine and serviced it then I loaded some more data and then I was excited I happened to be driving past that location thought I'd stop in and check it so I did and I recorded that I was there and if I moved any product around or whatever I did loaded more ePort data then I serviced it again loaded more ePort data and over time this history builds and builds and this is then what I can use to do some analysis with to see what products are vending well which ones are not vending well how's this location doing compared to other locations that kind of stuff so that's what's going on as I'm servicing this machine so as I monitor this machine I'm probably using my my remote monitoring tools like the machine inventory graph so I would come into my machine inventory after I had loaded my ePort data and I would say let's see how this machine is doing and I would run that report and it would tell me as of that day how much product was left in the machine so every day when I load my ePort data or every week when I load my batch of ePort data I can come in and check my machine inventory and just kind of monitor and see when things are getting low and I can see that I've got D5, 6, and 7 here are now at zero. So I probably should go out there and fill that machine up and uh, make sure I stock these products back up. I can run this report one other way and I can actually see the vend history of each one of these coils so I can tell when these went empty. Have they been empty for very long or have they been empty just recently? To do that, I'm going to just check this button right here. Now that that's checked, let's rerun the report. What the report does this time is now it will show me the vend history for each coil. So for example, I've got A1 here. I can see that I used Toco when I filled this machine on the 21st. And I filled it up to capacity, so I set that current fill to 7. So that set my product level at 7. Then nothing happened each one of these days is when the ePort data loaded. There was no activity for A1 until the 10th when one vended and that brought me down to 6. Then the following day two vended and that brought me down to 4. And so I'm still at 4 and I need 3 if I want to fill this coil back up to capacity again. Let's scroll down to the bottom and look at these empty coils. Okay so here's one here. This is my root beer. So I originally filled it up and I set the current fill to 12 nothing happened and I had one vend took it down to 11 stayed at 11 until I had another vend and then that took it down to 10 10 then I had three vends in one day that dropped me down to 7 then I had one vend that was 6 and then it took me to 5 then I went to 4 then two vended and I was down to 2 and then the last two vended which brought me to 0 and since then I'm still at 0 so it hasn't been empty for too long and now I need 12 if I want to fill this coil back up to capacity. So that's the idea behind showing the vend history since the last service. If I don't have that checked, then I just see the most recent. I get one row for each coil and it's the most recent information. So I'm using this to monitor that machine and I decide, okay, yep, I need to go out there and, and fill this machine up or check on it. So we go out and we fill up that machine maybe we print this report and take it with us we can export it to PDF or export it to Excel and then print it out so we print this out so we've got something with us uh, we can make notes on this and we go out and we we fill up that machine and then we come back and we want to record that service now for the Dufresne Law Office so we'll say that we service this machine on November 15th so go to our working location list and we'll go to edit our Dufresne Law Office machine. Okay, so the minute that we click edit and our new service window opens up, we see the previous service information that shows up in here. So this is the information, if we go through each one of the coils, we can see that is the previous information, what we filled the machine up to last time and how much we added to each of the coils. So as of 821 at 3 o'clock we had added one granola bar to fill that coil back up to 7 
and then as we go through each of the coils we can see which ones we added product to and and essentially this is the previous information now if we make any changes to this data and we do not change that service date and we save it what will happen is Toucan will recognize that we are making a correction so it's not going to insert new data into our service history instead it's going to find the service history with that date and time and update it with the information that we're saving so that's a way that we can um, make corrections if we need to so if we accidentally typoed something in we can come back in don't change that service date make the change and save it and Toucan will update our history and not insert new history for us so that lets us see that old information. The instant that we change this service date and time, Toucan is going to recognize that as a new service and it's going to reset this window for us. What's going to happen is any cash collected is going to be zeroed out. Fill vends or fill sales are also going to be zeroed out. All of the amount added for all of the coils will all be zeroed out. And whatever the current fill is for all the coils that will automatically be moved over to become the previous fill and so that will all happen when we save that or when we change that date the other thing that will happen is you notice this field right now is blank this is our e data level or the electronic data level this is the level of product in this coil based on the eport data or the electronic data that's been loaded so far so that's blank right now. As soon as we change this date and time to a new service date and time, Toucan is going to go through all of the ePort data that's been loaded so far and figure out what is the level of product that was in this coil at that date and time. And it will display that for us here and it will also reset our current fill to that same value as well. Now the reason that it does that and changes the current fill. It's taking whatever the old current fill is and moving it into previous fill for us and then it's changing the current fill to whatever the current eData level is. It does that because when we go ahead and save this service remember the current fill for all of the coils resets the eData level for that coil which means any transactions that come in from our card readers after the date and time that we record the service we'll start counting down from that new current fill remember when we were back on the machine inventory report and uh, that uh, blue row that was from Toucan had that product level set at, at 7 that got set because we had put the current fill as 7 for that coil so by resetting the window and having all of our current fills set to the e data levels that means that if we make a quick stop at a machine and we only fill up maybe five or six of the coils and everything else we leave the same when we come into Toucan or Toco all we have to do is put the date and time that we were there and then just hit those five coils and make those changes that we need to everything else we can leave the same because Toucan and Toka have both set that current fill and kind of pre-populated it for us. So that is what will happen as soon as we change the date and time of uh, our date time service. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, look at our, let's watch our cliff bars here and, and see this, see these numbers change. And even though we'll just see it here for the cliff bars, it's doing it for all of the coils for us. All right, so we're going to reset this to September 15th. As soon as I click this, it's going to reset. Okay, it has reset. So these have all gone to zero. Amount added has been zeroed out for all of the coils. And now our current fill has been recalculated to 11. Okay, so if we were to say, no, we were really there on the 13th. Now the current fill on the 13th at 3 o'clock p.m was actually 12 not 11 so Toucan and Toco both figure out what was in the machine at the date and time that you specify let's go ahead and change that back to the 14th and we'll say 
it was at 4 o'clock p.m. Okay, so now this window is set for us so we can record this service information. Cash collected is optional, so we can go ahead and record that if we want to, or leave it blank, doesn't matter. Fill vends and fill sales. In the Toucan manual, there is a pretty good explanation of what the fill vends and fill sales are. Basically, what they are is Toucan computing how many things vended and the total amount of revenue that came in from those vends, but it is based on how much product you're putting back into the machine. So Toucan is doing those calculations based on how much product you've added back to the coil and what the new current fill of the coil is. If you have a card reader in your machine where you're getting the revenue information from the card reader, the card reader becomes your source of revenue. Fill vends and fill sales would be a source of revenue for you if you didn't have a card reader in your machine. So hopefully that's a good enough explanation for the video on what those are. All right. After we put in the date and time, and if we collected any cash, the only thing we have left to do is to go through and make sure that the current fill value is set for all of our coils. We have to do that because the ePort devices um, do not know how much product is in the machine. And the machine does not have sensors in every single coil and, and spot for it to tell us how much product is in the machine. So the only way that Toucan can know how much product is in the machine is if we tell it. We have a couple of shortcut ways that we can tell it. The one you saw where we do fill machine. So when we click fill machine, because we've put in the date and time that we were there, it gave Toucan a chance to figure out how much product was left in the coil. So when we say fill the machine, Toucan knows how much is left, it knows the capacity of the coil, therefore it can figure out how much we would have had to have added to that coil in order to fill it back up to capacity. And since we filled it to capacity, it now knows what the new current fill is. So that's what happens when we do fill machine, is it goes through all of the coils and goes through that process. Now we can do that individually for each coil because we have a fill coil button. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and Toucan is going to do the same thing, it's just going to do it for this one coil. It'll figure out that since there's 11 here and there's a capacity of 14, we must have added 3. And if we added 3, then we filled the coil back up to 14. So we'll click that and that's what happens. So we could go through and just hit the coils that we know that we filled all the way up. That one was already full. Nothing had vented from that one, so our e-data level was 14, so we didn't add anything on that one. That one's also full. Here's one that changed, so if we do fill coil, we can kind of see how that's taking place. Now, additionally, when Toucan figures out that we must have added 6 and that the, um, the previous fill was also 14, it knows therefore that 6 must have vended. And since 6 vended and we have the price set at $1.75, this particular coil or this product added $10 in revenue to the machine. As it goes through each of the coils and figures that out for each coil, it keeps a total for the entire machine here at the top for us. And that's what the fill vends and fill sales then become. So we can go through each coil, use the fill coil button on the coils that we have added product to. You'll notice as I click this fill coil button, you'll see it compute the vends and sales here and it'll aggregate that here for us at the top, computing our amount added and current fill for us. When we click the fill machine button, it's doing the same exact thing. It's just going through all of the coils for us and basically clicking the fill coil button for us. So when we click that one, it just goes through all those coils. Now everything is set back up to the, the capacity of the coil for us. Okay, so as a shortcut, we can use these two buttons. We can say we filled the whole machine back up. Then after that's done, we can go through and make the changes to each of the coils. And we do that here in the coil detail area. So we just select the coil we want to make the change to. If we replaced a product in that 
coil, we simply pick the new product here in the drop down list. This drop down list is coming from our product list where all of the active products from our product list are showing up here in this drop down. So we just pick the new product and that's how we replace products in the machine. So now Toucan will know that any transactions that come in from our card reader that happen after this date and time, it's going to use the new product. Any transactions that come in before this date and time, it's going to use the previous product that was there that we exchanged because it'll be able to figure that out. Okay, and we've got uh, our new product. So then we need to say we really added seven of this new product to fill it back up to seven. Now if we try to put in a value that is more than the capacity of the coil, say we want to try to fake it out and put in a 10, as soon as we click off that field or move off of it, Toucan's going to reset it back to 7 for us. It's not going to let us put in more than the coil has the capacity for. So if we really do need to add more to this coil, say we reconfigured the machine, we need to change the capacity here. Say now we can take 10, so now it will let us go to 10. It won't let us go to 12 or 11, but it will let us go to 10. Now if we think we've got it faked out, and now we want to go back down to 7 again, as soon as we move off, Toucan can, knows that and it won't let us go above our coil capacity. So if you need to put larger numbers in here for the coil and you can't, just go ahead and update your coil capacity. Alright, previous fill automatically gets populated for us so we really don't have to worry about that. So the only things we're really doing when you service a machine is when you come in, you want to change the date and time service to the date you were there and you filled and closed the machine. As soon as you do that, Toucan is going to reset the window for you. Then go through and uh, either use the fill machine or fill coil buttons to go through and make sure that the current fill is set to what the amount of product for that coil is. And that's really all that you need to do. And Toucan pretty much does the rest. And that will reset the eData level so that your machine inventory stays accurate. And when you're done, you just hit save. Now, when we save, Toucan does one more thing. It looks to see if there is any electronic data that has been loaded after this date and time. So say that uh, today is really the 17th of September, and we have electronic data or e-data loaded for the 15th, 16th, and 17th. As soon as we save this record, Toucan is going to realize that that electronic data needs to be reworked or reprocessed. And it'll go ahead and reprocess that data for us and figure out the new machine inventory based on the data that we are saving. So that happens also when we click the Save button. Toucan goes through and figures out if there's any other data that needs to be reprocessed and it also creates the new information in our service history. So now if we were to go back to our service history and this is what we had shown up previously at the very bottom here it ended with our eData. If we re-retrieve this now and scroll down to the bottom there's the new row that we just created as we save that service information in Toucan. So that in a nutshell is how to record service information through the Toucan application. Thank you.